Hello everyone, welcome to a beginner's programming uh, logic lesson. This is going to be lesson number one, and we're going to be talking basically about uh, what computer programming is, and we're going to be talking a little bit about very simple things when it comes to programming. Uh, this isn't going to be a very long lesson, we're just really going to cover um, what we're going to be doing in the actual language modules of this lesson. So I wanted to begin by introducing myself. My name is Damien. Some of you have taken my courses before. Um, the other one's wrapped up uh, with me doing Java to about arrays, methods, and uh, early objects, and C++ going to objects, data constructs, and I don't know, other things of that nature. Um, and so in this, I'm actually going to try to progress evenly with both languages, explain things out uh, language agnostically in these logic modules, and hopefully uh, I'm going to make good programmers out of everyone. Um, the non-language modules, just these logic modules, will take place in Notepad++, uh, because this way I will not be tempted to actually try to write and compile code. So without further ado, I'm going to kind of explain uh, a few things about code. Just a quick FAQ. You might have the question, what is programming? And that's a perfectly fine question for you to be asking at this point. Now, programming is when we give um, a computer a set of instructions you want it to carry out. And that's it. That's all programming actually is. We're giving a set of instructions that do something, or technically they have the option of doing nothing, not that that would be a very useful program. But what we can also do is um, we can ask, well, if that's what programming is, what is the point of programming? might be the better question. And the point of programming is simple. To make complicated tasks easier and often automated. Many of the products that we use uh, that were programmed are really made, tailor-made to make our lives easier. Microsoft Excel, for example, is great at making, you know, small presentations. PowerPoint is great at making slideshows to bore people to death and fall asleep to. Um, these programs were made with that sort of thing in mind. Uh, calculators, you know, run on the same basic premise. Um, we'll actually be making a calculator using C++ and Java a little bit later on. So. The basic idea is, you know, using just normal everyday uh, ideas, we can create solutions to problems that we might not have otherwise been able to do. Like, let me ask you for example, you know, um, what are all the numbers between 1 and 100? Uh, when added to one another and totaled? And the answer is honestly, I have no idea. However, I can write a program that will find that out. And that's sort of what programming is about. You know, it's about things that we can solve, but it would be monotonous and cumbersome. You know, I could pull out, you know, uh, the Windows calculator and type, you know, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, you know, and go all the way to 100. But that's going to take a long time. And the truth of the matter is that if I write a program to do that, it will take under a second. So we're going to talk a little bit about a few things that we're going to be covering in the first language sections of each uh, program. Now, when we're dealing with programming, there's three basic uh, types of, of 
data that we're going to be using. There's going to be, I'll sort of break it down like this, stuff, or you know what, we'll say number stuff, uh, letter and number stuff and non letter slash number stuff. Okay, and so let me break that down a little bit more. Numbers are typically divided based on whether or not they can have a decimal place in them. So for example, let's say we have the number uh, 1.5. That number has a decimal place. Now, what that means is that it can't be stored by certain types of numbers. Um, in Java and C++, we're going to be dealing with four basic types of numbers. Int. An int is an integer. It's a whole number. It's going to store only whole values. Some examples of integers would be 1, 5, 27, 239, negative 123. Those are all integers. Long is essentially a very long integer. An example of this might be uh, that's not even properly comma separated. So let's fix that. So that's an example of a long. A double. A double is going to be, or actually let's start with a float. I have to fix that i and int. A float is going to be a, uh, a decimal number. And what I mean by that is I mean it does not terminate in uh, as a whole number. So let's say um, non-zero terminating floating point number. Actually, let's just call that a floating point number for the sake of it. And examples of these are going to be 1.5, 2.7989, you know, things like that. Okay, and lastly, we're going to talk about doubles. And what doubles are, are they're going to be a storage type for floating point numbers that are large. Um, typically we're going to try to use float. There will be some cases where we might need to get in a double. Um, but really these are going to be the four types of uh, numbers that we're using. And what these are going to be used in are known as variables. What is a variable, you might be asking? And the answer is fairly simple. A variable is something you define. An example of a variable, doing this again language agnostically, is going to be a equals 5. And that's going to be a, a, an algebraic sort of variable. Um, you know, so let's say we had the math problem. Now we know that a is equal to 5, so let's say a minus 2 equals um, 3. You know, given that value, could you find out what 5 is? I mean, of course you could. Or, or what a is. And I mean, the answer is, of course you could. So basically, when we're writing a program and we have something where a equals 5, the compiler doesn't even see the letter a. So carrying on from there, letter and number stuff. Um, these are going to be other types of variables. There's two of them that are that we're going to be using. We're going to be using string, and string is going to be whole words, 
and word slash number mixtures. Um, some examples might be hello world, um, ABC123, and just things of that sort of nature. And we're also going to be using char, which is just a single character. Example of that would be A, B, C, all the way down to Z. And I think that you can do like one, two, three, dollar sign. You know, any single character that you can type. So that's letter and number stuff. And lastly, the only other thing that we're really going to be getting into in the very basic stuff is going to be called, uh, this is going to be under the non uh, letter slash number stuff. And this is going to be called a Boolean. Um, it's actually different in C++ and Java, which is kind of a pain. Um, it's actually bool in C++ and boolean in Java. So that might cause you a little bit of trouble. But basically what it is, is it's a variable that holds a true or false value. So okay, I want to give you guys a couple of examples real quick. Um, let's just say a would be an integer. Okay, so let's just have a couple of examples um, before we move on and uh, finish up this video. I guess it wasn't as short as I had wanted it to be, but I suppose it shouldn't be. So assuming that we wanted to store a number, we would make an int, we would name it, we can name it a, but we should really give it a better name. So let's say we wanted to count how many items we had in something. So let's say int um, items on hand. And then we can set that equal to a value. Now, again, this isn't exactly programming right here, but this is the basic idea of how we're going to be declaring variables. Maybe we'll say something like string str equals hello world. And that would store this entire thing in a string titled str. But we could name it better and say hello string or str. So then, assuming we were to ever output items on hand, we would get the output of 9. Or if we were to output hello stir, it would output hello world. So with that much being said, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, I'm going to explain how all of this goes from this format and interacts with the compiler on a basic level um, in the next lesson. Um, I'm not going to get too deeply into the, the hardware side of things. There are uh, going to be better courses than what I get into for that. Um, I will leave you guys with a general understanding of how it works. But for now, what I want you guys to understand is that programming is basically something that's here to help us. We're going to be using numbers. Uh, we're going to be using variables. We're going to be using uh, strings, characters, and booleans as well to help us create programs that automate what might otherwise be uh, difficult tasks. So with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this first language agnostic video. It's actually the second time I've tried recording it. And uh, I hope that you guys will join me again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.